Hey everyone, before this video begins, there is one really important thing I'd like to mention, and that is down below in the pinned comment of this video, there is a link to a GoFundMe page that I have set up personally for a family member. Because the floods that hit Germany hit him and destroyed so much of his life, and he, instead of wallowing in self-pity, he has been out there helping other people. He has spent every single day that the storm hit helping people to salvage what they've lost, to clean up the mess, and just to help in any way that he can. He's been absolutely amazing, and I believe that he could do with just a little bit of help from myself, from everyone around. He just deserves so much. So if you could just click on the link, read it, it'd be amazing. Let's get into the video. What's going on YouTube? My name is ADC Art Attack, his name is Bob, and welcome back to a brand new episode in my Cheap vs Expensive YouTube series. Hello, fly. Leave me alone. That's right everyone, we are back with a brand new episode in this series. Now today's episode is a rematch, a follow-up video from the previous episode we did. And you don't have to watch that episode before you watch this one, but it might be a bit of a good idea. So there'll be a link down below in the description to the previous episode, as well as some... I don't know where to put it. Somewhere up on screen there'll be a click link thing to the video from yesterday week. What? Uh, I shouldn't talk, I can't speak. Now the reason we're doing a rematch here today is because last episode many people said that the paper I used was favoring one marker brand over another. So I disagree with that, but I hear you. So I went out and porched, porched? So I went out and purchased some brand new paper that I think will satisfy everyone mostly watching this video. Now, before we go any further, there is one thing I'd like you to do right now, and that is to leave a comment regarding this sheet of paper right here. Right here we have three different markings of marker. We have A, B, and C. Each one of them is different, and each one comes in at a different price tag. One is $1, one is $3, and one is $10. Now, I'm not gonna tell you which one is which. I'd like you, in the comments right now, to match up the price with the letter. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna to reveal to you which one is which, and I think you may just be surprised by the results. But this paper right here was recommended because apparently this is the paper to use with the Copic markers. So this is actually gonna give Copic a little bit of an edge here, a bit of an advantage going into this, but hey, that's what you wanted. You wanted Copic to have an advantage, so I am giving them it. And to be honest, they kinda need it after that performance last time. Now this paper came in at a price tag of $25, which is fairly reasonable if I'm being honest. It's not a bad price for paper. It's a little bit expensive, of course, for 30 sheets. It's not so bad, actually. It's like 70, 80 cents per sheet. That's not, that's, that's pretty good. So surprisingly, this is one of those few Copic items that doesn't cost an arm and a leg to purchase. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to using this. Hmm. So on my right hand side, we have the Copic Chow markers coming in at a price tag of $410. I'm not sure if you know this, but the Copic Chow markers are supposed to be the cheaper alternative to the Copic Sketch markers, meaning these markers are exactly the same, only these ones have a different thing. What's the word I'm looking for? Tube. And they have less ink in them, thereby making them cheaper. $400. For 72 markers though, that's not really bad, is it? And on my left hand side, we have the Pro Markers by Winsor & Newton. Now, very important thing right here, this collection here is just a placeholder. I purchased this set for the purpose of these videos. I will not be using from this collection because I do have many markers from Pro Marker and Brush Marker. But this collection right here is not completely useless. They do have a variety of these 24 packs, including brush variants, and they come in at a price tag between $50 and $60, depending on your region in the world. So yeah, there'll be some links down below in the description. I highly recommend you get this starter pack. It is really useful, comes with a variety of colors, and it's a good little taster right here for a very low price. So I would suggest picking it up. So it is time to get started. Pro Marker versus Copic. This is it. This is it. Round two. The final battle. Who do you think is going to win? Leave your comment down below. Let's go. Okay, so it is time to finally get started. And before we actually get started with using the markers themselves, we need to get a drawing, something on this paper that we can use. Um, 
something on this paper that we can use as a battleground going forward. Now, last time we used Loki, an original Loki, and it served its glorious purpose of being the battleground for these two titans of markers. So today I felt it was only right that we use a variant of Loki, Sylvie. Again, this is going to be an original drawing compiled of various references from the show to just Loki himself and trying to make something that bounces off of the original that we did because I want to keep the colors relatively the same when we go forward. I've just got to interrupt right here. So it has come to my attention that not many people own a light pad, which you are seeing me use in the video right now. This thing is an important piece of equipment that every single traditional artist needs. If you are planning on doing a serious final draft of a drawing, you need one of these and they do not cost that much. What I'm going to do right now is put some links to some that I have found in the description down below. I highly recommend you get one of these light pads. They are not expensive. You can get very cheap ones. You don't need expensive ones. I'm using one by Gaimon, but really it doesn't matter where you get them from. They all do the same job. Just some of them have, you know, they can change in brightness, but I don't know how important that is. So with that all being said, Sylvie is complete. Now I really do like this drawing and I think it's going to serve a wonderful purpose of being the battleground for today's video. So let's get started. So starting things off today, we're going to begin by using the Copic markers. Now, unlike the previous episode, I will be adding some effects. I had some requests for them, so yeah. But there really isn't much we can gain from such a small area without adding more. So I'm going to begin with the surrounding areas to test the blending of these markers right off the bat. So yeah, I'll be using a mix of colors immediately. Now, the last time we used Copix, we saw an immediate problem that bothered both myself and many viewers. That being the separation of the colors, particularly when layering. So does today's paper, Copix paper, make a difference? It's not looking too good right now. Now I get it. People will say I'm not a Copic professional. I use pro markers. Well, no. I'm a professional artist with alcohol markers, which Copic are. I have used many over a decade long career and I've always allowed the pens to guide my approach and I rarely find major issues. So if the excuse is that I don't frequent these markers, then they aren't user friendly and that is a negative. At this price, they should be accessible and comfortable and easy to use. So let's for a moment put aside these separation issues because I'm open minded and I actually do prefer that grit. I like it. It looks very cool, but it's still a negative. The blending of these markers is, well, they do blend. They need a little work to get there, but they do. You know, these are the most expensive markers on the market. They should blend. This is why I'm critical. If you charge such a high price, you better bring it. I shouldn't be required to compliment them on a basic use, but given some of the issues previously, unfortunately I am forced to. And regards to the blending, there is a difference using this paper, I will admit that. Last time, the blending was requiring force and wasn't really happening. This time we are getting somewhere, but is that right? I had to buy their paper to get the results I expect. And even still, remember this, things look different, better if you will, before we do a side by side comparison. So this may not be as it appears, and I guess we will see going forward. Now, one of the areas I feel we are seeing more improvement with this paper is these yellow areas. I will do my best to keep quiet on that separation. I know it's not the main focus, but it was one of the key points holding them back last time. Anyway, I am actually using one different color here, which may sway the results. I chose gold. It looked cool. That's why. So 
So while I continue my journey using them, there's a key point that people refer to when comparing Copics, and that being the refill. So, okay, yes, they are refillable, both the Chow and the Sketch variant. But so what? There are other refillable markers. Where I live, as an example, a pro marker or brush variant is about $3. A sketch marker, not using the chow because they're the lesser option and have less ink than a pro marker, so it's unfair to use them for this comparison. The sketch is between $10 to $12. So before we even go to refilling, we can buy four pro markers. I've been a marker artist for 10 years now, with pro markers for around 8. And I think I've only ever bought one colour four times. And that was black. The most common colour in a marker collection. Where and when would I benefit from a refill? The ink would probably get lost, dry up or fall over in that time. And let's be honest, I do more art than a casual artist, so yeah, the refill holds absolutely no merit to me. I will give you this, other locations around the world, perhaps it is worth it. But remember, you might still be better off just buying free markers over a few years. So then, the skins. Now, this is a tiny area and it is a perfect chance to test how these markers handle precision. And I actually got a separate skin set for this one because I wanted it to be fair, so I bought a skin set of Copics just for this area. Now, given this is such a small area, it is a true test of alcohol markers because they don't work too well on very small areas. And we can only really see the effects when we start using those darker colors. The slow ink flow of these markers is absolutely amazing for small areas. And for precision, these markers work absolutely fantastically. There is minimal bleed out, so you have control to contain those colors where you want them. And it's fantastic. I think it's absolutely amazing that these brushes are so flexible yet so precise. And that's quite rare because very often you will get yourself a brush marker that will have an extremely flimsy nib and pretty much be uncontrollable. But for some reason, these ones work well and I gotta give credit to that. Okay, so there's the results. Now, look, I've just skipped a massive portion of the video and I apologize for that, but I'm getting a little bit frustrated and we're gonna come back to this at the end of the video and I'll explain what is causing my frustration, but I just need to move on from these. There is something about them that is bothering me. I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if you can tell what it is, but make no mistake. I absolutely love the way this looks. I think it looks fantastic, but objectively, there is a big issue and something that needs to be addressed and we will do so at the end of this comparison. So, it is time to move on to the pro and brush markers. Okay, so as we begin, there's a very important point to be made here. I'm going to be using a similar or identical color palette here for this side, as well as matching the shadow patterns. This is because I have a much wider range of pro markers and it would just be totally unfair to use them all. But at the same time, I don't have a dark, deep green. I don't know where it's gone, but yeah. I won't be able to achieve as deep shadows, but that's not the point. I mean, this isn't about the final piece. It's again about the usage, how they perform and how they feel. So with that said, as you can see, I am starting with the sword glow effect again, and we actually have a negative and a positive to speak of immediately. I know, right? A negative? Me? About pro marker? What? The negative being that these markers do reactivate some of the ink of the line work. Now this is avoidable by allowing dry in times between your layers, but fair is fair, Copic does work about a... I'd say 40% better over the line work. It's way more forgiving to use Copic. And that's kind of a big deal because using these markers is about how comfortable they are to use. Naturally, we all work differently, but for my own hand, weirdly enough, pro and brush marker are a little bit uncomfortable for me to use. They don't seem to work at the pace I'd like to. But actually, that negative does come with a positive. 
thanks to how reactive these inks are, you can quite literally blend the colors as much as you'd like. As you can see with this glow, it starts off sort of stiff, but the more I choose to touch it, the more it blends out into a natural glow. And honestly, I could keep going here. There seems to be no limit on how much you can blend, but I think you get it. The surrounding areas, it's actually incredible how much more I can do. These markers, be it the pro or the brush nibs, have much faster ink flows than Copic, which some people may consider bad. But for me personally, it's actually giving me far greater control and the colors reactivate, meaning I can keep pushing that glow as far as I'd like. Even with those dark greens already in place, I can for some reason continue to push the glow into the dark colors. So once again, the arm area is a big test for both markers. It's a large area, so coverage is tested here. Now naturally, I work in layers, so there isn't just one color being used in such a large area. So it's not majorly important, but it must be said, using only the brush nibs, the faster ink flow of the brush marker mean faster layering, thereby creating smoother, more even coverage over a large area. But as we begin adding more layers with our shadow tones, we can see the blending capabilities at work. Are they smooth? But more importantly, are they requiring much effort? Well, <laughs> the smoothness of the blends, I don't know. You tell me. Seriously, this is so easy to use. I mean, if we slow it down and you see just how little effort I'm putting into getting those blends, the markers naturally blend into each other and pick the color from the other side and mix them together on the paper. Due to them reactivating so easily, they just blend perfectly. And the longer you leave them to dry, the softer and smoother those colors become. All right, look, so the bullet nib. It isn't the most convenient thing, and I'll admit that the bullet nib does take some getting used to, and if you are not used to using a bullet nib, you're gonna hate it when you start using it. It has a very fast ink flow and large coverage, but it still works. It is capable of the smooth blends that the brush markers do, and it can actually work with them. Now granted, it is nowhere near as good as the brush, but you have the choice, and I like to have choice. I'll tell ya, I never use these markers on marker specific paper. I prefer and am used to the texture of sketch paper, but using these markers here today has shown me the quality of these markers. I feel in total control. I feel as though the limitations are only on your skill level or your mindset. If you can be bothered, I kind of spend my time watching The Walking Dead for the seventh time. But these markers are just so easy to use. And the great thing is they have such a high skill ceiling that I'll be progressing and using these throughout my entire career. So there we have it everyone, the video is complete, what did you think about it, do you like it, do you love it, let me know in a comment down below. Now I do apologize that I didn't speak so much about the marker specifics, because in the previous video we covered quite a lot about them, and this was just a video to fill in some of those gaps, and to go over and elaborate a little bit more on some of those key areas. But I know, it is quite difficult to look at them both side by side and to really see and appreciate the differences. So let's take a closer look at each side, starting with the Pro and Brush markers. I think using the Copic branded paper today actually hurt Copic even more than the previous episode. These Pro and Brush markers took on the challenge and arguably performed even better than they did last time on sketch paper with some of the most perfectly smooth coverage and amazing blends, we truly get some incredible results here. But I think the biggest thing with them is how easy they are to use. They require little to no effort to get the blends. They essentially blend themselves, which makes them super accessible and user-friendly 
And I think that is a huge deal to any and every artist. Now, taking a look at the Copic side, I want to start by saying, although I was critical about them, I do like the markers. Make no mistake, they are still a top tier marker, but these are the most overhyped markers on the market, so I have to be critical. I do personally love the results, I love the gritty texture that they leave behind, but objectively, this is bad. The colour is separating, and whether I like it or not, it is not what I expect from such a high price marker. The blends are not smooth, and biker- you know what? What am I doing? Look, I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm trying to be nice here. Once you start to blend these markers, that is where the colour begins to separate. I could have totally done a test on these markers doing cell shading, but if I did that, what's the point? Cell shading, pretty much any alcohol marker can handle. A few lines of colour side by side, the coverage may vary, but ultimately, all you're doing is applying a solid colour. And that's a basic use of markers and what I would come to expect. And if you're gonna do that- no, wait, 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 wait. Okay, I got a separate sheet of paper here because I'm, I'm speaking about this as if I've done it. I've never cell shaded with these before. So, I've got three different types of markers here. One of them cost one dollar, one of them cost ten dollars, and one of them cost three dollars. And what I'm doing is applying an even layer equally across each one of these markers. And I want to see what they... Oh my gosh, you've got to be kidding me. I just want to express that I am using Copic paper. I think it's very obvious that the brush and pro marker are miles ahead. What's actually got me right here is the Copic versus Ohuhu. This is quite literally the highest end marker versus the lowest. I didn't expect that. Okay, so we are left with one question, and that is which is worth it? The $500 Perm Brush Markers or the $5,000 Copics? I'm gonna answer this whether you're buying it from the EU or whether you're buying it from the US with the prices being around the same. Copic. <laughs> Perm Brush Marker. Come on. Behave. So there we have it everyone, the video is complete, what did you think about it, did you like it today, let me know in a comment down below. But let's talk about this paper right here, because a lot of people said to me that the paper was the issue in my previous test. So today I bought the Copic paper, and yeah, this is great paper, I mean it's really good paper, but it didn't help Copic at all, it didn't change the results, the results were still the same, if anything they actually helped Promarker more than they helped Copic, so... I just, I, I don't understand what's going on here. I don't know the marketing here. I, I really don't get what Copic is going for. They are a fantastic brand and they do work amazingly well. But when you put them against another brand, you do start to see some of those issues. And especially in the art style that I do. Very big important point right there is that this is based on my art style and what I create. Obviously, if you're going for something different, you may prefer Copics and they probably are better for you. But this paper, would I recommend it? Yeah. I mean, it's really nice paper. The only problem I've got is that it's got this spiral thing down the side, which when you tear off the paper, it looks horrible. That's the only criticism I have of it, but it is great paper. So I'd recommend the paper. It's nice paper. It's not too expensive as far as paper goes. You can get cheaper alternatives and arguably better paper, but it's not bad. It's reasonable. It's fair. Unfortunately, that is all we have time for today. My name has been ADC Art Attack. His name is Bob, and we look forward to seeing you all again in the next video. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>